All right, so today we're gonna talk about cases. And it's probably not the sexiest of topics, but I have gotten several requests here recently from people asking what I use to get my gear to where I'm going. And so I thought I would make a video talking about everything from my stands to the computers, to the lights, to the cameras. And I will open those up and give you a couple tips and tricks that I have learned along the years when it comes to packing these cases and hopefully getting where we're going all in one piece. All right, the first case we'll start with is my stand case. And let me say from the onset here uh, that all these cases, I'll put links down below uh, so you can uh, find them. I don't even know what the model number right off the top of my head is with this one. I've had this one for years and years uh, and it's lasted me uh, and it stayed in really nice shape um, considering all the travel that it's, it's endured through the years. But this is a Timba roller bag. Really, uh, like I said, it's, it's maintained itself pretty well over the years. Uh, it's about 49 inches uh, long, which is right on the edge of airline restrictions. Some of them will say, I think like 48, some will say like 50. I've never had a problem uh, checking this. You can pack it to uh, heavy enough weight to where an airline will want to charge you extra uh, for like a, a overweight bag. Uh, there's some tips and tricks tricks I've talked about in the past when it comes to flying with gear. If you're flying with a lot of, you know, several cases, uh, two, three cases, it's almost easier to upgrade your ticket to like first class or business class because then you get uh, all these overweight um I guess fees are exempt from your bags and uh, you automatically get a couple extra check bags. So if you start doing the math from like a coach seat, uh, when you start adding the fees for luggage, it can quickly add up to a first class uh, ticket. And so that's what I'll opt to do on some occasions. But let's get back to this bag. 49 inches long, uh, it got nice handles. Uh, you can see I've got uh, name tags, another uh, big thing with travel. I like to uh, try and get my name on a couple of areas, like one on the outside, and then there's a zipper here, and so I've got more contact information in this pocket that someone, if they'll take the time to, to investigate, can find my contact information in there. You can also put, obviously, air tags in these as well to keep track of what's going on. This one's got uh, some nice plastic kind of uh, guards here on the back, kind of slide guards, and these are great for when you're pulling up curbs and stuff like that. This one's missing a couple of screws, <laughs> but it's still hanging in. Most importantly are these uh, wheels down here. Uh, when you have these big heavy bags, you definitely want to uh, have the uh, capability to roll your bags. A bag without wheels these days is not a good bag. So now let's take a look inside this bag real quick and I'll show you what I've got in here. All right, just flipping it open. You can see my light stands in here. I'll keep my extension cords if I need them. Uh, also a four-way. I like these uh, because they're thin, um, but a four-way receptacle there. You've got side pockets on the edges where I'll keep my umbrellas and stuff like that. You got them on both sides. Uh, but, and I'll usually have room at the top for reflectors, uh, canned smoke, stuff like that, uh, if I need it. So, and then you got a pocket here, this one, kind of ripped off a long time ago. I don't really ever store anything in here, but you could probably put a flag or something in there or something, um, or maybe even some gels or something like that. But that is my stand bag. Next up is the case for my iMac. And I'm not gonna spend much time on this because I'm phasing out the uh, iMac that I've been using for years. It's a 2017 model, I believe. And it's just gotten too slow in comparison to the, the new M1 chips in the laptops. Uh, and so I'm probably going to revert back to a laptop until they come out maybe with something closer to uh, what the iMac uh, I used to use. Uh, till that they get closer to that form factor with the 27 inch screen and, and all that good stuff But I'm not that impressed with the uh, current iMac offering. So 
what I'm probably going to do is, like I said, laptop with maybe an external screen if I need to. Uh, but I've been asked multiple times, this is a super expensive case. This is also a Timba uh, case, and it is formatted for the older iMac. So hopefully when the newer one comes out, if I need to, I can reshape the interior uh, of this case uh, and make it work. But for right now, I'm going to use it as a table for my next bags. These are what I like to say are my travel camera bags. And these are both, I believe they're 25 liter bags. This is the PGY tech bag. And this is the McKinnon uh, Nomadic bag right here. I've actually done a dedicated video on these two bags that uh, I'll link up um, one of these corners wherever the link shows up. Uh, and if you're interested, you can watch the uh, comparison of these two. I will say uh, when I am traveling for work and I need as much gear as possible, I opt for this PGY Tech bag. And when I am more, I guess, local or for vacation type stuff, I will opt usually for this Nomadic bag. Uh, I just feel like I can get more gear in the PGY Tech. It's, it's a great bag. It's not quite as sturdy uh, as this one. Uh, one of the main keys with these bags, and I mentioned it in the video with the, with, that I've dedicated to them, is that you can fit these under the seat in front of you on an airline, so on an airplane. Uh, if you're like me, I have uh, great anxiety about uh, my photo gear uh, and getting on an airplane and then having no low, like overhead storage. So I will travel with a bag that I can make sure I can slide underneath the seat in front of me. So there's no issue with someone wanting to check this bag underneath after or while I'm trying to board on a plane because there's no storage left. And that is uh, a major nightmare when you've got as much money invested in our, in our gear that we have. Uh, so these are both uh, great bags. I'll show some um, B-roll clips of the insides of them. And uh, like I said, you know, if I didn't have this one, I would be just fine with the PGY Tech. This is the one I kind of opt for more often than this one here. So travel bags, 25 liter for more local jobs. Uh, when I'm driving two jobs, I will use this larger uh, nomadic McKinnon bag. And this thing is fantastic, uh, built like a tank, just like the smaller version over there. Uh, but this thing uh, will not go underneath the seat in front of you on an airplane. And once you load it up with gear, it, it gets pretty dang heavy. Uh, but I like it with the, uh, say like the Peak uh, tripod here, Peak Design tripod fits right here. And I just find, um, in a normal use case where I'm not having to fly, uh, this bag, I can put just about anything in it that I need and uh, it'll uh, do the job. I will say that if anyone from Nomadic is watching this, uh, I did have one of these zippers uh, break off of one side. Uh, so that's a little bit uh, of a pain, but it still works just fine. Um, and these zippers are you know, super high quality. Same with, with that other small bag there. But this is the bag I use virtually all the time when I'm not having to fly. Great bag. And finally, let's talk about my cases I use for my strobes. And I've got these two and one more uh, of these cases. These guys are really fantastic for what I like to do. These are the Pelican uh, 1615 cases. Uh, and I've got, and these are the Air. Make sure uh, when you're looking for these, are the Pelican Air cases. I had the regular Pelican kind of version of this box, uh, our case, uh, several years back before they came out with the Air versions. It's a lot heavier, uh, it was thicker. Um, and when they came out with these, uh, I quickly switched to these just for the weight factor. They still keep your uh, gear as safe as possible. I have had, uh, I mean, you can only do so much when you're traveling with these when it comes to uh, guys that handle your gear from the airlines. Uh, even with the older, thicker cases, I, I had uh, damage done to uh, strobes. Fortunately, that hasn't happened recently, and I've flown several times with these cases, as you can see here, uh, with the tags, uh, and I haven't had a problem recently, so uh, fingers crossed that it will stay that way. Another kind of thing, just like the what I talk about with the stand bag, uh, I like to 
have my name on these. I have to, re <laughs> have to redo that one. But I like to have my name on these uh, as many places as possible. They have a dedicated slot on the side where I'll put my card uh, there, and then I will have uh, information on the inside as well. I do have air tags in these that I will slide in um, behind the divider. So one more neat thing. Uh, this is an earlier version. This might be the first uh, Pelican Air version. Uh, these have older class. These newer ones I kind of like uh, where you have to push in with your thumb and then open them up that way. I also want to add that I have at one time or another, I've had um, Pro Photo kits in here, Godox kits, and now currently the Westcott kit. So it will perform with just virtually any uh, brand of strobe. Uh, they're all pretty close in size. Obviously the bigger ones, you can be able to fit less in here uh, than the smaller ones. But let's take a look. I'm gonna open uh, one of these up and we'll take a look on the inside these before but I want to show them again so these are two of the cases opened up this has got the Westcott kit in it and this one has the pro photo kit uh, that I have uh, the Westcott kit I can fit in this configuration I've got uh, one two three four five uh, FJ 400s and then I've got two of the 200s there I've got uh, batteries stacked in this one and then I put batteries Kind of on top of the strobes, I can make room and stick them there. Uh, FJ200 batteries here, chargers for both uh, sets of lights there, uh, room for reflectors, uh, adapters, all that kind of fun stuff. Whatever I need, I still have room there. Uh, I can also set this a configuration where I can pull this stuff out, add another light there, and I can pull these out and switch that out for a, another 400. So I can conceivably, I can do uh, seven FJ400s in one of these cases. Over here is the Pro Photo version. Uh, these are B1s, B1Xs. I've got five of those batteries, two chargers. Uh, this is something I want to show too, just kind of in the tips and tricks category. Uh, what I like to do is pretty much anytime you fly, your bags are going to get opened and inspected and they leave these little pieces of paper in them. So I just like to put them on there. So when the TSA opens up your bag, they see that. So uh, hopefully they know it's already been inspected and that'll kind of keep them from maybe moving stuff all around that type of thing. And that note as well, this is the lone lock that I have left. I've kind of given up uh, putting these locks on my bags. Uh, when TSA checks them, whoever's checking them, uh, they don't ever put them back. And um, they supposedly have these little master keys that they can open them up and uh, put them back on your cases when they're done. But um, I've just found over the years that uh, whenever I get somewhere, probably nine out of 10 times, uh, those locks are gone. So don't waste your money. And I think I showed earlier, I like to put my names here and I'll put, I mentioned earlier, and I do, what I want to say too, I guess I always get these with the inserts. Um, I'm not a big black foam guy that just uh, creates way too much anxiety <laughs> for me uh, if I kind of configure it wrong. So I, I get these with the inserts and then I will slide a air tag uh, down in the side of these bags. I think there's one in this one actually currently right now. So that uh, wraps up those uh, two cases. I hope that kind of covers uh, your questions that you've had for me when it comes to uh, travel cases. If you've got any more, please drop them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to kind of answer those. Or if you have any other tips and tricks that you want to share with other people, please feel free to drop those uh, down below. So you know how this ending of the video goes. If this was uh, helpful for you, please hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more content just like this in the future, hit that subscribe button down there and the little bell so YouTube will let you know when I'm back on here. In the meantime, you can find me on social media at Quants Photo on Instagram and X <laughs> and ProLite Mods at ProLite Mods on Instagram. Y'all please stay safe and healthy out there and I will see y'all soon in the next one. All right, I'm back. I wanted to show <laughs> the, uh, the cart that I use to roll in my gear for a typical photo shoot on location. And it's a uh, rock and roll cart, uh, rock and roller. And it's the R12 model. I like the ones with the plastic tires. 
the old cart that I used to use had uh, inflatable tires on it, and that was always a pain uh, when, when uh, I would go to load it up and I'd have two flat tires. So this takes care of that. Uh, also, I like the big tires on one side and smaller on the other. Just makes it easier to uh, maneuver. Uh, as you can see, you can expand this cart out, or if you've got a smaller loadout of gear for a particular shoot, you can keep it compact. But for this case, I thought I would just expand it out, uh, throw a bunch of stuff on here and show you kind of how I lay it out. So I'll put my light case on one end and uh, this is a table that I'll use to uh, put my computer on, laptop. Uh, so this is kind of the tethering table. So what this does is it gives me uh, some lift on either end, then I can lay my uh, boom across and the, uh, the stand to go with that, the rolling stand. And then I'll use sandbags to keep those uh, in place while I'm rolling. And this gives you enough room to add like your soft boxes or backdrops or any of that type of thing that you might have uh, to roll in. Uh, got like an apple crate there. I usually will, since I usually have my camera in a backpack, I'll normally put my camera backpack on and uh, just have it on me and then I'll just roll this in. Uh, sometimes I will say, so the stand bag, at that width of right around 49 inches is usually too wide to go through a typical door. So normally I will have someone roll that case alongside me uh, when I'm you know, loading this into uh, the set. So another thing I like to do like on that boom arm, I will stick it on that side. So when I am over here pushing, this is a lesson I uh, learned way back that the uh, end of the extension arm on that boom is not hitting me in the shins. And so this is how it works. I will see y'all in the next video.